May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Uh, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry tells this story that uh, from the weeks after the 2016 presidential election. And just real quick, if you don't know, uh, the scripture passages we read every Sunday are part of our revised common lectionary. They're assigned. They are determined, you know, decades ago. They're on a three-year cycle. And so we do those every three years. We're doing year A, year B, year C. And those texts are assigned for decades and decades and decades to come until they decide to revise it again. So this happens... I say this because sometimes people say to the person who schedules the reader, why do you always schedule me when there's difficult words and names to pronounce? Why do you do this to me? And the scheduler never looks ahead and just assigns you that day, and that's the text that happens. But Bishop Curry tells the story that after the 2016 election, in the couple weeks or months after, the assigned reading was uh, the Beatitude, which... That week said, blessed are you who are poor. Woe to you who are rich. Blessed are you when people persecute you. Woe to the people who persecute others. And people called Bishop Curry to complain that their priest was intentionally choosing passages that were anti-President Trump. <laughs> and he had to explain, first of all, these are the words of Jesus. So maybe think about that. And he also explained that it was, you know, assigned way, way ahead of time, but then invited them to reflect on why they felt uh, the words of Jesus were going against their political persuasion. <laughs> and what does that mean for us as followers of Jesus? And as preachers, sometimes we hear the criticism that we shouldn't talk about politics because Jesus wasn't political, which is fairly ridiculous when you read about the life of Jesus. In today's gospel, he's walking to Jerusalem to uh, culminate his life and ministry. And his disciples feel like he's the Messiah. And they're wondering, I wonder, if, if will Jesus be a Messiah who is a king? So the political ruler? Will Jesus be a Messiah that's the chief priest? So the ruler of the religious life of the people of Israel? Will Jesus be some kind of hybrid of both, like a king and a chief priest and kind of rule over all the political and religious life in all of Israel. Either way, they felt like Jesus as the Messiah was a big deal. And Jesus preached in a way that, that disturbed the political powers that be so much that they executed him. Right? So Jesus at one point calls the Pharisees, who kind of were the religious leaders, he, he says, you brood of vipers. And then another point, talking about King Herod, he says, you go tell that fox King Herod. And he speaks against King Herod and the things that he's doing. So you come to learn as a preacher that when people say, you shouldn't talk about politics, it's, it's not right. What they're saying is you shouldn't preach Jesus in a way that goes against my political leanings. <laughs> That's really what they're saying. But Jesus had things to say about all aspects of life and our political life as it applies today. And just like today, uh, Jesus was going through a town and they didn't want to accept him. And so uh, his followers wanted, to, wanted justice. They wanted retribution. They said, Jesus, should we call down fire from heaven to consume these people? Which is kind of funny to think that James and John had this power just waiting for them and could call it down whenever they fell. And Jesus says, no, no, no. I do have all that power, but we're going to use it for love. There's a different way, and we're about a different way. But as I've said before, you know, American political life right now is incredibly tribal, and so people feel like they're following Jesus, and then in the name of Jesus are enacting harm and unloving things upon others. And they are actually doing what James and John did. They're kind of like, should I call down fire on these people that disagree? Should I call down fire? Should I, should I do these harmful things, but it's part of my political tribe? 
And it's what we want and it's what we think is right. And so we'll do these things because we have Jesus on our side. And yet enact harm on the least of these, as Jesus says, or as Howard Thurman Cott said, the disinherited in society. And so this week, you know, the Supreme Court made guns more easily to be carried about, uh, going against states like California, which has demo demonstrated like data that shows that California's more restrictive gun laws actually might uh, prevent uh, more shootings, more violence, more mass shootings. Um, and then, of course, uh, the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. And so you kind of see that, all right, there's some harm being enacted by this that's going on. And again, we live in a society where we don't have secure housing for everyone. We don't have good health care for everyone. We don't have uh, well-paying jobs for everyone. And yet we're going to enact these laws that just make life even harder for the least of these, for the disinherited. And it's people clinging to Jesus and yet behaving a little bit like James and John. But then the only problem then for me, and for maybe us, is that I get infuriated at those people. And I want to call down the fire of God because I'm right in my following of Jesus and they're wrong. And then Jesus reminds me, alright, despite their problematic behavior, I can't... Uh, hate them in my heart. I can't want to call down the fire. I mean, I want to call down the fire of heaven, but then I need to check myself. Say, all right, there's a lot of work to do, but I also need to be kind and loving and uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and following the example of Jesus. <coughs> and so we get to the second half of today's gospel passage where uh, Jesus is going to Jerusalem to possibly be made king, to be made the chief priest, to be made this, to be made that. And people say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to be part of this. But, and they come up with these excuses, right? I want to follow Jesus, but. I want to, I want to give my life to Jesus, but. You know, i got to hang on to this other thing. And that is always a rub with some of us, right? Uh, as an example, when I was a priest in North Carolina, I knew this older couple in their late 60s, early 70s, and both their spouses had long passed, and they fell in love and wanted to get married. At like an older age, they wanted to get married. Beautiful. And she was local and uh, was Baptist and was white, and he was from New York, but his parents were from Puerto Rico, and he was black. And so they went to her longtime minister and said, hey, we want to get married. And he said, oh, no, 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 I, I don't do interracial marriages. And thankfully, the man uh, started yelling at him and said, how can you preach Jesus and have hate in your heart? That's racist hatred that you're preaching right now. How can you get up every Sunday and talk about Jesus and be so hateful? And the preacher just kind of shrugged and said, that's how I was raised. So you think about that. It's like, I want to follow Jesus, and here's the culture that I was raised in, which is more important, right? I want to follow you, Jesus, wherever you lead, except, uh, you know, I have this culture I was raised in, and that would just be weird to go against my upbringing. And I know that story because they came to me and I ended up uh, happily marrying them. And they were just a beautiful, amazing, cute couple. And I also was just so horrified that in, I think it was 2017, uh, just five years ago, that I had to do this wedding because another preacher was hatefully refusing. So what do we do as followers of Jesus, right? And I think one of our keys is to say, like, I'm in the tribe of Jesus, not other people's interpretation of Jesus. And that means I can constantly allow the words and teachings of Jesus to form my, my life, to form my opinion, to inform, inform how I approach the world. And so we're constantly being formed more and more into more faithful followers of Jesus. Which means things that I thought I was right about, I might be wrong about. And that's okay. Because I'm trying my best to follow Jesus. And for me, following Jesus means trying to care for and help and serve 
what Jesus called the least of these, and what Howard Thurman called the disinherited. How can we seek and serve that group of people? And as Cornel West, uh, Dr. Cornel West said, justice is what love looks like in public. And so when we cry out for justice, we're really crying out for our neighbors and our brothers and sisters to be more loved in the public sphere. And right now, it's a week where it doesn't feel like there's a lot of love. And then we see things that are being enacted that it feels like are going to harm the people at the bottom of society the most. And so we cry out and uh, we pray, we, we march, we uh, love our neighbors, we call our politicians, we vote in certain ways. Not because we don't like those people, but because we love everyone. And our love for the least of these demands a cry for justice. So these are hard times, some weeks, and we are faithfully following Jesus. Hopefully not with a but this or but that, but instead we say, where you lead me, Lord, I will follow. Amen. Amen.